Hello everyone and welcome to Insight. Today's episode is going to be on the camera obscura. Photographers just love their equipment and they'll go out and they'll spend thousands if not tens of thousands of dollars to get the latest and the best. That temptation is a relatively new one. I mean people always like new gadgets but you know recently uh, camera technology has evolved into something that would have not even been imaginable uh, 20 years ago. Uh, digital technology, uh, all sorts of amazing Wi-Fi technologies, you know, built into our cameras. Camera uh, evolution has been around for a while, but the camera itself has actually been around, believe it or not, and most people don't know this, uh, for probably around 2,000 years. The camera obscura uh, was around for uh, a millennia, if not, if not longer. The term camera obscura comes from the Latin, and it basically means dark chamber. And in ancient times, the camera obscura consisted essentially of a room, a darkened room with light admitted uh, through a single hole uh, on one wall. The effect of this was that an image would be projected on the wall opposite the hole, and this image would show you everything that was on the outside. The principles underlying the camera obscura uh, are extremely simple. The most important principle is that light travels in a straight line. And when the light is concentrated enough through a small hole, it can actually uh, form an image of whatever is outside. Now, the image is upside down and back to front. And this again, is because of the fact that light travels in a straight line. Another thing that we know with uh, the camera obscura is that a very tiny hole, because the hole is tiny and the light that comes in uh, isn't very much, uh, the image is dim. But the uh, image is sharp, okay, because the light is very concentrated. On the other hand, if you make the hole larger, um, you'll get a brighter image, but uh, the image is less well focused because the light rays actually overlap and they cause the light to uh, essentially make the image uh, somewhat blurry. The camera obscura was actually very important because it was used um, in the science of, of ancient times. For example, the scientists were able to use the camera obscura to view eclipses without actually looking at the sun directly. So this was a very practical use for the camera obscura. Now around 1558, a man by the name of Giambattista della Porta suggested that the camera obscura can be used uh, by artists. Basically, he said, look, you could take the camera obscura, you can project an image uh, on a wall, and by that time they were also working on portable camera obscuras, but you can take the camera obscura, you can project an image that can be traced, and that way artists can produce very realistic uh, paintings and images. Many artists used the um, camera obscura, and one artist that is very, very famous for probably using the camera obscura was the Dutch painter Vermeer. Many of his paintings have been debated about because, um, you know, it's been speculated that he must have used the camera obscura. Now, we don't have any documented evidence that he used it because he never actually uh, wrote it down, like, I used the camera obscura. But if you look at his paintings, right, the paintings themselves are the best evidence. And there's one particular painting that has been studied uh, quite a bit, and that painting is officer and laughing girl. If you look at the painting closely, uh, you'll note that there's something about it that there that is distinctly photographic. The painting shows what is known in photography uh, as perspective distortion. And perspective distortion is caused by either a wide-angle lens or a telephoto lens. With a wide-angle lens, 
uh, because I think uh, this particular painting actually illustrates what happens with a wide angle lens. With a wide angle lens, objects close to the lens uh, appear abnormally large relative to more distant uh, objects. In the painting, uh, the two figures sit very close across the corner of the table. But the image of the officer's head, it is about two times larger, wider, that is to say, uh, than that of the smiling girl. And what this suggests is that there was a use of some kind of a lens, probably in conjunction with a camera obscura, to produce the image. Because in the 17th century, this kind of a painting would have been very unusual. Typically, if two characters in a painting were sitting in the same in the same way, uh, without the use of a camera obscura, the painter would typically make the heads of the two figures relatively close in size. Right? There wouldn't be this kind of difference in the size of their of their head. So this is just a little bit of information about the camera obscura. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I will put up some more videos later. Uh, if you're enjoying what uh, I'm uh, doing here, please subscribe. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.